Yeah, guys, quite a weekend for Hawkeye sports. Well, the Hawkeye women's basketball team took on the top team in the Big Ten yesterday. And before we show you highlights, here's a little taste of how it ended. And the Hawkeyes did it like they know how, feeding Megan Gustafson. She posted a whopping 31 points, 24 of which came in the second half. She also grabbed 17 rebounds, leading the Hawkeyes on pink day. But with under three minutes to go, it was Alexis Savian putting up this three, stepping it back and knocking it down in the corner to help propel the Hawkeyes to an impressive 86 to 73 victory. This win put the Hawkeyes in a tie atop of the Big Ten standings with only three more games to play before the conference tournament. You know, Hannah kind of kept us in the game the first half, and then um, Megan did a great job. I thought Tanaya really led us, you know, five assists, no turnovers, shot the ball well. But Lexi's three with 2.30 left to go puts us up six, and I thought that was a huge, huge basket for us, and then we made free throws. Now, I'm sure you noticed from those highlights that there was a little different in the Iowa jerseys. DITV sports reporter Allie Green tells us more on why the Hawks were thinking pink in their big win. On a very special day, the Hawkeyes pull off a huge win against Maryland here at home. This last Sunday, Hawkeye basketball fans traded in their black and gold for pink for the annual breast cancer awareness game. The players even upgraded their jerseys for pink uniforms with a very special addition on the back. It's really special. I mean, we always talk about as a team, even before the season starts, that we're playing for the name on front of our jersey. Um, but it's really special that we get to put the name on the back of our jersey, who someone in our life that's been affected by cancer, and it's a really powerful feeling. Um, I've got my grandma on the back, and I never got to meet her, but I know that she's watching and she's really proud, so it's really special. The Hawks upset the number one team in the Big Ten, but the focus on the game was kept on honoring those affected by cancer. The team even brought out cancer survivors for their player introductions. To get to see that and for them to have that experience, we're really glad that we could do that for them after they've had such a tough fight. Not only did the Hawks play an incredible game, but they came together to recognize an entire community. The game ended with a final score of 86 to 73. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, Allie Green, DITV Sports. Now, Bluter's Bunch wasn't the only basketball team in action this weekend. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but at this point, Iowa had another Big Ten buzzer beater. Here's what head coach Fran McCaffrey had to say about that shot that I still can't believe went in. You still have a chance to win, and you have to make sure you have the right people on the floor, and they understand the framework of what we're trying to do. You know, I think contrary to what a lot of people think, you know, we diagram these things and it goes to perfection. It never goes to perfection. There are multiple options on a in a situation like that, and you hope that one of them works. Same thing happened in the last game. There were multiple options, by and hits a three this time, Joey at the three. And it's terrific, you know, for our team. Hurts if you're the other team. But if you have smart kids with character and you, and you give them some framework, they'll, they'll execute, and at least you have a chance. That shot, wow. Well, now both basketball teams getting big wins this weekend had encouraged some healthy competition on Twitter. Tyler Cook quote tweeted this tweet that said, if TC and Megan Gustafson played one-on-one, -on -one, the score would be 11 to nothing in Megan's favor. And Megan responded by saying that she might have left TC, she might let him score once or twice, but that he had to teach her how to dunk. I don't know who would win that game, but man, that sure would be a good one to watch. Now, while both Cook and Gustafson were wrestling it out on Twitter, the Iowa wrestling team was doing it on the mat Friday night when they hosted Indiana for senior night. Senior Spencer Lee spent the night pretty easily as he took on Indiana's Elijah Oliver to help the Hawkeyes jump to a 6-0 lead. Then everyone's favorite villain returned to Carver Hawkeye one last time this season. And yes, I'm talking about Austin DeSanto. DeSanto Tech Falls, Indiana's Paul Conrath, 18 to three. It only took DeSanto two minutes and 46 seconds to make Carver Hawkeye Arena about as rowdy as he is. And finally, Alex Marinelli pinned his opponent in just two minutes and 10 seconds. The Hawkeyes finished on top with a final score of 37 to nine, but not everybody was happy. I mean, we probably underperformed tonight overall. 
And, you know, we had to track a guy down that left the building. And that does not sit well with me. And, you know, when you get beat, you have to be able to get back on the horsey and, and gallop. Well, the Hawks will gallop to Stillwater this weekend to face Oklahoma State. And while the wrestling team is headed to Oklahoma, the baseball team is just getting back from Florida. I'm only a little jealous. There's totally not three inches of snow outside. But tune in tomorrow to see how they did their opening weekend. Noah and Susanna, back to you.